This is Ryan Cantor, and in this episode, we're tackling a mailbag question about NIL. So Color of Gray came to me with this question. Any expectations or predictions from the House speaking on NIL this coming week or on Swarbrick's proposal ideas uh, from this week? That, those were that's Notre Dame Athletic Director Jack Swarbrick uh, in the Wall Street Journal published an op-ed um, arguing a couple of things. So, so why don't I start there and kind of tackle sort of his, his thesis on what he suggests and maybe how realistic some of that is. Um, so first, just a couple points that he hit on. He wanted to regulate uh, NIL, saying that Congress too must act to resolve conflicting state regulations, clarify that our athletes are students, not employees, and give the NCAA the ability to enact and enforce rules for fair recruiting and compensation. Um, and that's really talking about um, pay for play and inducements, right? So NIL is getting getting kids who are already on campus opportunities to use their name, image, and likeness to profit um, while they're kind of a pseudo celebrity with the uh, with the university as a football player. Uh, that's one thing, but paying them to come to your school because they might be good at football uh, based on the high school tape to serve another. So that's what he's talking about there. He also calls for a national medical trust fund to benefit student athletes regardless of uh, you know how how wealthy their their athletic department is at the school they choose to go to. That was actually a New Jersey Senator Cory Booker's proposal. Um, so that is not new. Um, he also calls for players who leave um, leave school to go pro to have the option to return. And notes that Jerome Bettis did that at Notre Dame, and they they allowed him to do that for free. He, probably the least realistic of all of these, he calls for the NFL to make a minor league system, um, sort of like the G League in um, in the NBA, so players don't have to go to college um, if they're not serious about school and don't don't care about learning. Basically, just just go. Um, so those were a couple of his of his key points. Uh, he also says that professionalizing teams, treating athletes as more as employees than as students, and weakening the vital connection with the educational mission of the colleges will rob athletics of its special character. Gradually, it will be seen as merely a version of professional minor leagues. So I do think he makes some fair points. I do think, you know, paying the players to go there and this slow, gradual sort of disconnection um, from the actual university and the football team is a concern. Um, I think we're seeing the football players sort of living sort of separate lives. They have separate places to eat, separate places to you know, basically do everything. So they're sort of quartered off uh, from the rest of the students. I think that really got big during COVID when they were trying literally to be not, not, not be around them uh, so they would not test positive and they could play. Um, but I do think some of that separation has continued and is not quite um, sort of what we experienced even just, um, you know, a little bit over 10 years ago when, when I was in school and you know, just even even much more so beyond that. Um, so I, I think that that has some truth to it. Now, um, I, I think uh, having a minor league NFL is totally unrealistic because the NFL doesn't care. Um, they're profiting off of the marketing that college football does. So why would they possibly do that? The NFL draft is a huge money maker, And part of that is because you know these players because you watch college football. Um, whereas a minor league NFL, it would, you're not going to watch minor league NFL like you watch college football. So the draft, they'd have, they'd lose money on that. Major League Baseball just lost, just sized down their minor league system because it wasn't profitable. Um, so, so I don't think that's too realistic. Now with regulating NIL, as much as, you know, I would like to see that, I think it would be better for the sport. Um, I think that is a lot of um, sort of casting blame or, or hoping to redirect the pressure from um, the NCAA and administrators who did a poor job for years and sort of got us to this bad spot and say, well, maybe Congress can just fix it. And everyone is so prone to blame Congress. Uh, it's so easy to blame Congress because they often deserve it. So let's let's kind of direct focus there and, and sort of take some pressure off. I, I don't think there will be a big, um, a big, um, a big win there, a big movement there. Um, so kind of circling back around, this one's older, but Senator Booker, uh, again from New Jersey, had a, had a plan that he came out with, obviously he didn't get any traction, um, but he called for the medical trust fund. He called for a scholarship, even if they need more than the four years until they get a degree. Um, and then he called, what was interesting is he called for um, equal facilities uh, for men's and women's sports, but he also um, noted that um, the revenue sports and those players are somewhat exploited um, as that money gets funneled into other sports. So it's, it's a little bit of um, contradiction there as if you want the sports to donor money to uh, get subsidized by the football and basketball team, that's fine, but 
you can't really have it both ways. Uh, more recently, Tommy Tuberville, Senator out of Alabama, is working on a bipartisan bill with Democrat uh, from West Virginia, Joe Manchin. Um, and theirs kind of takes the um, somewhat of the opposite angle, probably a little bit more um, what Jack Swarbrick was talking about. They want to uh, limit or ban collectives. Um, they they pretty much straight up call out that collectives are not really doing their stated mission of helping kids once they're on campus find deals or not find deals, but work with them to get deals. Um, they're essentially paying paying inducements. And I, and I think it's hard to deny that. After the Jaden Rashada saga of Florida, he was going to go to Florida um, and he was promised a bunch of money to go to Florida when that deal fell through. He didn't have any interest in going to Florida. He's at Arizona State now. I think that kind of proves a lot of these collectives um, and perhaps not the Clemson ones. Um, it seems like Clemson is less involved in that um, based on their inability to land transfers that want money and how all the, I should say, a, a large number of the players uh, out of high school they land talk about how um, NIL wasn't their main thing. So perhaps this isn't a Clemson thing, but a lot of these collectives are paying kids to go to school there. Um, disclosure of NIL dollars is another big one, um, whether it's anonymous or, or you know how much each player is getting. Um, opening it up so it's not so under the table was another thing that is talked about. Um, and the Sunball Conference has actually come out and, and kind of mentioned that this would be good. Um, I think that's that's probably going to be a little hard to tell players, um, especially players at private schools. They have to tell you how much they make when the coach, in theory, at a private school doesn't have to disclose any of his salaries. Um, you know, Jack Swarbrick and Notre Dame just hired a basketball coach and he has no obligation to disclose his salary because it's a private school. So that's probably a stretch. Um, so I think some of the things in in these in these bills and in Swarbrick's Wall Street Journal op-ed are good. I just don't know that there's any muster, um, any will to actually pass them. I think it might be more passing the buck on the Congress that's um, easy to blame, um, fun to blame. You know, people don't like them or at least don't like half of them. So just kind of push that blame off from the schools and from the NCAA onto them and uh, watch them not work together and get something passed. So I, I don't expect um, a big bill to pass that, that solves our problems. It probably shouldn't either. Um, so we'll see where NIL heads in the future of college football, but it's certainly a hot topic um, and certainly one that will continue to shape the sport.